Hello everybody and welcome to another toy review. In today's video, thanks to the team at Sir Toys, we're taking a look at something a little bit different. We're looking at a CSSC, Cultural Creative Center Marine Morpher. This is a 1 700th scale vessel with jets included and it does transform. It changes up into a robot. Uh, it's a big piece, it's really substantial. I saw it up on Sir Toys and I thought, I wonder if this could be modded to be kind of my broadside for now. Uh, I'll show you that when we get him into his bot mode, but haven't had him in hand for a few days playing around with him. I actually really love the idea of this being the flag, USS flag kind of G.I. Joe inspired and it transforms up into a robot like we got with Rolling Thunder and Optimus Prime, but this is such a big piece. A little sweeping pan here, look. We've got all of these jets all lining up. We've got everything where it should be. I think there's probably too many on deck. I don't think you'd actually really have this many, but we've got a little bit of robot on the underside there, and we've got these lovely stands, which work an absolute treat at holding the ship up. While I have them to hand, here he is with MP10. Give you an idea of just how long this thing is. The back end of Prime's feet are level with the back end of the vessel. And we have Thomas as well. I don't know a great deal about the aircraft, but I think they're the same as this chap, again, which is a licensed product. Uh, they're basically little tiny pieces, but I think that's meant to be the same. Any downside to <laughs> all of these um, is that you have to remove them for the transformation. Uh, so we're just gonna assume that they've all flown off. They couldn't destroy what they needed to. So they have to send in the big guns, uh, quite literally. Uh, these stands just unplug and unplug. Now, when I received mine, bridge was detached, it was separate so it didn't get damaged in transit. There's two screws here, just halves these in and then there's a tab Underneath here, you just literally slide those either side of that tab. It's actually a really nice kind of bridge as well. We've got a little viewing area here. That's where the captain or your pilot sits. I'm bringing it in. Maybe could have done with that being kind of a little bit more weathered. Everything holds together pretty nicely. Good solid piece. I love this additional lip that we have here. That is formed entirely by, oh, ah, come on out you come, the addition of a sword. So bring that up, bring this up. Look, and he has a giant sword to bring into battle. Let's get this transformed up into bot mode. Starting point, the bridge slides over to the side. That then allows uh, these tabs here to open up and same on this side. These are then going to open up. Uh, they've got this tab at the back here. They come out, they come out and in doing so this here should, ah, there we go, be able to lift up and lift up like so. This is then going to lift up as well. And then at the front of the vessel, there we go, those lifts up. Our legs are going to separate. The tab comes undone. And much like we get with a lot of the transformers these days, the leg panel is gonna slide, revealing the knee. And the feet also slide down. And as we slide those down, those are going to rotate, revealing 
the foot. And now we've got space for this to curve up. And you've got a tab here and a tab here, which allows this to lock and secure into position. Bring these arms down either side. Lovely ratchets on those, they can come down. These are gonna separate. And we have a fist joint inside, which we can flick out and push close and secure that off. That can then come down and be brought around. Same for this side, bring that around, separate the joints, flick and reveal the fist. Bring this in and close that back off. Just realized uh, I should have had the flat section in boat mode. Uh, basically this comes down, this rotates around like so, it comes back up and then you're gonna rotate the neck again and then rotate the head. So the head faces forwards and you have this neck tab which can push and secure in to this piece here that holds everything in and makes it look awesome. This can then rotate and that can rotate. This can then rotate like so. Like that and then that can then rotate. There. And there. Okay, you then want to separate this top section. That's gonna come down and hinge. It's gonna come back. And in bringing that back, this panel here flips, and that now allows this to rotate back on itself, like so, and then come forward, and they form kind of missile launchers. But again, this goes back, this comes down, yeah, this is this comes down, this is gonna rock, and they sit over like so, and then we get the option to slide the missiles forward, and then pop that back down, like so. We now have some missiles there, and same on this side. This time we have some jets that can kind of launch from his shoulders, like this. And we have him fully transformed up. He's definitely not broadside, is he? Um, but he's still got some really funky kind of battleship vibes about him. He looks awesome. He's uh, definitely not without his flaws. He is very kind of front heavy. Uh, it's just the way those uh, kind of rocket launchers sit. If you bring them down to the back, then he becomes back heavy. And uh, see, we've got those heel spurs tucked into the back of his legs, giving him those calf muscles. Now, if you bring those down, he does gain some more stability, but it does hinder the feet moving forwards and backwards. Now you may have seen a modified version of this floating around on social media. It had a Superion head, which I believe they've got from the Zeta Toys Mini Superion. And they've also managed to remove those shoulder rockets as well, which really does trim this guy up. Personally, I like how he looks. Uh, I like my Transformers nice and clean, but this isn't necessarily a transformer. This is a huge kind of mech that uh, the Chinese military and Navy, they've all kind of come together and they've built and they, I can see it kind of defending the borders, etc., or trying to attack whatever those jets were scrambled out to get. And personally, I like how it looks. It's got that kind of big chunky, almost kind of hearts of steel vibe to it, much like we got with the MMC Shockwave. Um, that's a good thing. It's a good, solid figure. It's licensed, so there's actually money gone into the production on these, and it's made well. Yes, the legs are a lot looser than I would like. They need to be tightened, uh, maybe a little bit of kiki or something in those joints just to kind of really solidify them and stop those shifting forward. But all in all, it's a good looking piece and it is great value for money. Uh, I hope 
these guys do more of these because these are fun. To give you an idea how big this chunky chappy is, I have him with TE01 and of course MPRC. So he's a good size, uh, kind of like a leader class figure with that backpack, I guess he's probably more ultra class. But at the same time, if you want him as a broadside, he is nowhere near big enough. Uh, definitely not to scale with these anyway. I mean, one one seven hundredth, uh, that's a fairly big scale. Let's quickly cover the articulation. The hand, once its uh, sword is plugged in, it actually holds in there quite nicely. You just have to make sure you tab that in firmly. Uh, but the hands actually have the least articulation of the rest of the torso. It's kind of just a fixed unit with these movable fingers. Uh, the head itself can look up, down, left, and right. It's just mounted on a ball socket, but the ball comes from the neck. Uh, so, I mean, you could probably switch out that head quite nicely. I mean, it's, in fact, it's a very kind of superior esque head anyway, isn't it? It could probably just be painted up. Uh, now, to get this backpack piece off, they would have to have popped these pins. There's two pins behind there. Pop those out, and I think then possibly it would just slide right off. Uh, but again, that's uh, popping, popping the pins. A little bit of extra work, but it shouldn't have been too difficult. Shoulders can come all the way around, come out to the front. So we've got kind of a butterfly joint on there as well. That's kind of spring loaded in there. We've got the rocking motion actually up inside that shoulder joint. So you've got lots of range. We've got some waist rotation. The back butt tab here untabs, uh, which folds in just there, which is nice. That's a nice little cut on there. We get waist rotation. We get an abdominal crunch. Kind of get more articulation on here than we get on some of the actual transformers. Uh, hip skirts to the front allow for legs to come this far forwards, this far back. Out to the side, nice bend on that knee, uh, just shy of 90 degrees, but again, a nice kind of natural cut in there, which makes it look rather nice. And then we've got forwards and backwards on those feet, and we've got a lovely tilt, but no rocking side to side, unfortunately. But you see what I mean? It's a little bit loose on that tilt. And uh, although the joints here are nice and tight, it's just so much weight on that backpack, it could definitely hinder it. Uh, for those who want to know, you could probably pop the ball socket, the hips out, uh, the hip skirts, I'd imagine would pop out. I just don't want to apply too much pressure in case I snap the socket. But again, that's probably something you could remove if you don't like the added kibble in there. But there, there you go. Here's a big chunky bot, very handsome looking fellow. And once he's balanced, he's actually pretty darn good. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll include a link where this can be purchased over at Sir Toys. And until next time for myself and the rest of the collectibles household, thank you all very much for watching.